in this segment, uh, we will design the feedback controller for regulated DC power supplies using this uh, voltage mode control. So once again, we will take a look at this uh, uh, control block diagram and uh, it's a small signal representation and we are looking at this loop transfer function from A to B in order to design this uh, controller transfer function. And uh, <coughs> as you can see, the loop transfer function is made up of the product of uh, these uh, transfer functions. So uh, once again, we should remind ourselves that uh, there's a crossover frequency, F sub C here, not to be confused with the controller, the C here, but it's really the crossover frequency, okay, where the loop gain crosses uh, 0 dB, or unity, and then the phase margin, which is to, uh, the phase of this uh, loop transfer function with respect to minus 180. So that's given by this expression over here, right? So what should be the form of this uh, uh, controller transfer function? And that, uh, in this case, we'll select it to be like this, uh, where uh, this, uh, there's a, a pole at the origin in order to give us a zero steady state error, okay? And uh, then we'll see that we need certain phase boost at the crossover frequency to get the desired PM, let's say, phase margin of 60 degrees. So we need some phase boost. So in order to get this phase boost, we'll make of, we'll put, two zeros and two poles at uh, uh, these uh, frequencies, omega z and omega p. And just to make our uh, design simpler, we'll put both zeros at the same frequency, omega z, and both poles at the same frequency, omega p. But that doesn't have to be the case. That's just to make this uh, <coughs> explanation simpler. So we'll see the need for this phase boost, and of course, uh, we have to have this uh, pole at the origin to give us a zero steady state error. <coughs> so um, first we, thing we need to decide is what is uh, our cross free, crossover frequency F sub C going to be. So if you look at the, the Bode plot of this uh, power stage uh, transfer function, uh, what we will do is we will put we'll select the crossover frequency to be somewhat be beyond this resonant fre resonance frequency of this LC filter, okay? Not very far, because if you put very far away this crossover frequency, we'll see that uh, the phase of the loop transfer function would dip, dip below minus 180 uh, line, and that is not uh, a good practice. So that's the reason why we'll pick this uh, crossover frequency, F sub C, let's say in this example, to be at one kilohertz, uh, slightly above the resonance frequency of the LC filter. So once again, to remind ourselves, this is the, the tra uh, controller transfer function that we are trying to design, where we have three unknowns, this gain here, this uh, zero frequency, and the pole frequency. <coughs> so here, uh, first thing we need to do is to find out how much phase boost is needed. We sort of uh, saw, discussed, or mentioned earlier that this phase margin is about 60 degrees, right? So how do we get uh, this phase margin of 60 degrees at the crossover frequency? So let's look at the, the controller transfer function that we agreed upon, and the phase angle of this controller transfer function at the crossover frequency uh, that's equal to minus 90 degrees, which is introduced by this pole at the origin, plus uh, because of this uh, uh, part here, we have a phase boost defined with respect to this minus 90 degree line. So if you look at the overall phase angle of this controller transfer function that is given, but uh, we measure this phase boost at this crossover frequency with respect to minus 90 degree line over here, all right? <clears throat> so this uh, loop transfer function uh, and the phase angle of that at crossover frequency is the uh, power 
power stage uh, uh, transfer function uh, phase angle at the crossover frequency plus the, uh, the controller transfer function phase angle at the crossover frequency because uh, the sensing network is not giving us any phase shift and it, neither is the uh, PWM IC block, okay. So these are the only two involved and uh, the sum of these two phase angles uh, is the, the phase angle of the uh, loop uh, transfer function at the crossover frequency and that we would like to be, uh, you know, minus 180 plus the phase margin, which we agreed to be about 60 degrees, let's say. So from here we can, if you can substitute for uh, G sub C phase angle over here, uh, from here, uh, we can see that we can calculate uh, phase boost and that phase boost would turn out to be given by this expression over here. And uh, <clears throat> so if, if we know this, knowing the crossover frequency that we selected, uh, we know how much phase boost we need. And uh, we can show, uh, not by any approximation, but uh, uh, in, uh, uh, by analysis we could show that uh, First of all, uh, you know, if you select uh, the zero at this frequency and the pole at this frequency, and by the way, omega p and uh, uh, f sub p are just related by two pi, right? Similarly, the, the frequency of the zero that we have, or zeros, I should say, there are two of them. And uh, in this type of transfer function, uh, uh, we, we see that, uh, uh, they uh, the the f phase angle uh, plot would peak at the geometric mean of these two frequencies, and we would like to put that uh, uh, geometric mean to be at the crossover frequency. So this is the crossover frequency, because that's where we are uh, trying to get the boost, right? So we have this expression, and then we have another expression which uh, based on this uh, phi boost for this type of transfer function, it tells us that uh, the square root of omega p or omega z is given by this expression over here. And like I was mentioning to you, it's really not, you know, you can get that by analysis, not by approximation of any sort. So uh, now we have enough equations. We know phi, phi boost and uh, we have two equations and two unknowns. One is omega p and omega z over here. So we know, uh, having decided on the crossover frequency, uh, we ca you can calculate how much f the phase boost is needed. And once we have calculated that phase boost with uh, this type of uh, transfer function here, we can calculate where the zero frequency is and where the pole frequency is here. So. Uh, in the controller transfer function, uh, this is calculated and this is calculated. Only thing remaining is the gain here, and that we can calculate very easily because uh, once we have decided on the crossover frequency, uh, we know that uh, loop transfer function gain should go to one at this uh, crossover frequency here, right? So the product of all these transfer functions should be at the product the gains, I should say, of all these transfer functions should be equal to one. So uh, knowing this from the, the Bode plot of the power stage, knowing this by uh, what, uh, based on what uh, PWM IC that we have selected, knowing what the sense network gain is, uh, we can calculate K sub C in this uh, controller transfer function here, okay. So, uh, having calculated all of these uh, unknowns in this uh, uh, controller transfer function, then we can represent that or implement that, I should say, in practice by means of an op amp, if you would like. Okay, and that is what is shown here, where you know we can uh, uh, we select some value of R1, some reasonable value, and then uh, all the other uh, element values can be calculated from these equations over here, okay? And that is what is shown in this uh, uh, 
uh, piece by simulation where uh, the circuit is operating, converter I should say is operating in steady state and at uh, one millisecond some extra load is switched on, the feedback controller, this is the sensing network, the feedback controller is represented here and the loop is closed and you can see that the output voltage is V0 here. Uh, initially it was at 12 volts, it uh, it oscillates a little bit uh, uh, when the disturbance occurs, but then it settles down to, again, uh, the original 12 volt value. So in summary that we have seen uh, how we can apply this uh, feedback controller design to a regulated DC power supply using voltage mode control. There's another type of control, uh, so-called peak current mode control, uh, that uh, would be discussed in another segment.